Hey guys, good morning. This is what I wake up to. Noise. Noise, noise, noise. They're drilling next door. They're cutting the grass in the front. You gotta remember, they only do that as soon as I open my eyes to wake me up so I don't go back to sleep. Where were they cutting the grass? I don't know. There's no more grass to cut. It's all mowed. Look at that guy over there. That, see that machine that he has? Look. Anything to make noise for me in the morning to wake me up. Doesn't matter, I'll go right back to sleep. Guys, to wake me up and bother me, you know what they do? The guy who cuts the uh, corner uh, grass with that little machine, with that, you know, that pole, they leave it on the whole time and they walk from one area to another with that machine on and cut a little bit around this tree and walk back there, cut a little bit around that tree and then walk all the way there and cut a little bit around that tree and leaving the machine on the whole time so I can hear the motor. Listen. This is the noise campaign that they covertly do to me in the morning. Pretending they're cutting grass, pretending they're fixing this swimming pool, pretending they're, you know, doing whatever. So they don't do it all day long. They only do it a bit in the morning to wake me up, and then they stop. Then the next day they do the same thing again. And they have this drilling. Somebody drills here. He's got a drill in one of one of the apartments. I can hear the noise in the morning. It's not even real drilling. It's not continuous. It touches a bit by a bit. Uh, uh, to intentionally wake me up uh, 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 that's how it goes on and off on and off quickly so it's intentionally they're not really drilling anything because if they are or they're you know uh, using a, a gun to uh, screw screws they don't do it that way it's not continuous and this guy I noticed the guy who's cutting the corners down there um, he's leaving the machine on and he's cutting a little bit there and he's walking all the way to the other tree and he cuts a little bit there yes see him over there down in that tree it's hard to see with this camera because it's really small so they cut a little bit but they don't turn off the machine they leave it on they walk with it all the way to the other tree and then look look at him walking listen it's still on he doesn't shut it off they make noise for me covertly because it's only a little bit. If you cut off around this tree and that tree and that tree, in about a half an hour, you'll be done here. And it won't be on the whole time. You'll cut a little bit, you shut it off, then you walk to the other part, you cut it up, you know what I mean? So this guy leaves it on the whole time. It's been going on for about 40 minutes now. I've been lying down trying to go back to sleep for 40 minutes. That's what they do to wake me up. Part of the noise campaign in the morning. To deprive me of sleep, they do that to me as soon as I go to bed and when I wake up in the morning. See guys, now that I'm up, listen to how quiet it is. It's quiet now. Nothing going on. It's about 10.15. I'll show you now on news station. Because I'm up now. They woke me up. So nobody's cutting the grass anymore. Nobody's mowing the lawn. Nobody's drilling in the wall over there. It'll come back to noise later to keep me annoyed. But listen to how quiet it got. For some reason, the guy who was cutting the grass down there, the corners of the trees with that long stick, the machine, finished right now. He only needed to cut them while I was sleeping to wake me up, and now he's finished that I'm awake. This is only like 15 minutes later, I'll show you the time, it's like 10.15. Just to show you the covert, sneaky way they're creating noise for me to wake me up, to deprive me from good sleep. Because if you don't sleep, you stay stressed. That way on the outside, they can stress you more by stalking you and harassing you. Because it's not working. Their whole system is crumbling down. It's not working with me anymore. It's not bothering me. So watch, I'm gonna show you the time right now.
and for some reason my internet's always it's about 10 15 I'm gonna show you on a news station it gets cut off the browser doesn't respond it slows down I don't know what they do to it you know they have everything topped I mean these guys are the masters of this stuff hackers work for them the best hackers in the world because they're the ones who like to stick their nose in people's business so look it's June 21st 2019 and it's 14 16 GMT which is 10 19 or 16 uh, Eastern time Toronto time okay guys see it's quiet now listen no noises no nothing nothing The, the, the noise campaign starts just before I wake up. They wake me up, make sure I'm up, then they stop. They don't cut trees anymore. Now till tomorrow morning. That's how it is, guys. Every day, every day at night time when I close my eyes just before I go to sleep, same thing. Just to show you that. You know, this is the actual true time right now. Okay, guys, talk to you later. Can you guys hear the drilling on and off fashion? It's very light. Goes on like this all day long. And when you're sitting down and it's quiet, you got the windows closed here, you can hear that in the background the whole time. That's how annoying it is. So it is all day, guys. Hey guys, it's the 21st of June, 2019. Coming. said coming he didn't hold it they never do they're not supposed to they are not supposed to you're supposed to see really strange looking creatures around you all day long that give you dirty looks and do their best to mistreat you covertly this is pretty much what we're gonna encounter every single person into my world that's gonna keep moving the whole time that's so all you're gonna see movement then we're gonna move and talk loud and have fake conversations noise and movement guys please don't see listen to the banging that's what they do to me all around me everywhere I go they're not real people they're fake they're guards prison guards that make noise and movement to drive me crazy that's how I'm being covertly imprisoned by CSIS in this building where I live, 2743 Victoria Park Avenue. So I don't get in touch with the outside world, build connections, or even get a job, or be able to rent another place. They have everything tapped. They call them, they tell them not to rent me the place wherever I call. So they have me imprisoned here. And they're attacking my bank account, they're doing everything possible to pretty much choke me. Socially, financially, in every possible way. Psychologically, emotionally, and physically not allowing me to be in touch to get in touch with normal people everywhere I go they empty the place put their agents in there how they do that I really don't know guys please watch my other videos don't judge if it's the first video you watch because if I was in your shoes I'd say that I'm crazy too all right please watch other videos so you see proof of what I'm telling you and that's about it 
I've said too much on many of the videos that I record. If you want to get a, a preparation to what you're going to be seeing in my videos, you can check out other videos. I just, you know, sort of getting tired of it. Every day I keep on repeating the same thing. I'm not going to do that anymore. I'll just say this little part. So you, if, if you want to get a better description of what you're about to see, check out other videos. Thanks, guys. Basically, what we're going to be seeing is people moving and talking the whole time. It's a noise and movement campaign everywhere around me. That's how you know the people that I'm getting in touch with are not real. They're doing strange things. They're pacing in front of me, crossing my path, walking towards me. All I see in my view is movement and noise all day long wherever I go, even if I go to a secluded park. They're starting to bang and take the elevator so that it's, it's used, so I have to wait, wait, and wait. For everything in my life, I have to wait. So this busyness of people precedes me everywhere I go, and they make me wait, wait, wait. If I want something as simple as a cup of coffee, I gotta wait half an hour. And clog me up with people around me everywhere I go. People, 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 everywhere. Can't get away from them. That's how you, why you become miserable. So they're not only your prison guards, they're also torturing you every instant by standing in front of you, blocking you, talking, annoying you, making noise, mentioning stories that annoy you, psychological warfare, you name it. June the 21st today, 2019. It's about 11.30 right now, AM. So watch how busy it's gonna be everywhere. People should be at work or in school already. And I have to see different distractions every day. So they crack the window down here. That's why they put this. I have to see distractions every day. Objects put in front of me like this bicycle, things like this cracked. Events, changes, every day I have to see this. There are distractions to try to defocus you of your goal and throw you off. And garbage, they're big on it. Garbage, I see about 15, 20 garbage trucks a day minimum. And wheelchairs and canes everywhere I go. They try to keep me depressed keeping the elderly, the sick, the disabled around me everywhere I go and putting objects in front of me like cars or carts or whatever. That's it guys. See these two sitting over there? They're not enjoying the weather. They're there for me guys. They're all operatives. They work for them. Whenever I'm about to leave my house, they have me surveilled. They bring them out. Okay? Please do not jump to conclusions and call me crazy. Watch my other videos so you see proof of this being repeated on a daily basis and not by me talking by showing you footage of what I encounter on the street that's the proof because talking doesn't mean anything it's seeing footage and I record almost every day every day about what I go through big trucks 18 wheelers on the road whenever I come out everything it's mad it's a prison an invisible prison in plain sight It's hidden in plain sight. How do you know? Too much movement in front of me, wherever I go. Cars and people and anything. And noise. And objects put there where they don't belong. For me to always see things, objects in front of me. It's depressing. You get depressed when that happens to you over a long period of time. And big people, a lot of big people walking towards me to block my view, wearing bright colors in the daytime, wearing white at nighttime because it's more noticeable. Just movement. Everywhere I look, there's movement. Everywhere. Movement, movement, movement. So they're like extras in a movie. They wait. As soon as I get close to them and look at them, they move. They do whatever they're supposed to do to play their part. Like I said, elderly, limping, canes, wheelchairs. They're famous. See, she's waiting, the black girl. As soon as I got close to her, she moved. Because I have to always see someone in my view moving. Now, if they're big, especially, they always have their carts on them, holding bags, objects, rolling uh, the kids' strollers. And look at this set of carts. At this time, these are all agents, guys. In this area, at this time, there shouldn't be that many cars lined up in a row on a weekday. All right, there's almost traffic like rush hour here now. It's not even noon yet. 
and always cars parked in front of me like this objects so because they can't bring in a lot of people anymore if you watch my other videos you see tons more people there's barely anybody on the road now considering you know the Truman world the one I live in watch my old videos and you see tons more people on the road so they've cut down because I've been exposing them they're afraid because what they did is a huge crime and in the name of a government agency they've broken so many laws over the last 30 years since I came to this country they've held me prisoner all this time in a very strange like peculiar prison and in real life okay by surrounding me with their people wherever I go even in the establishments in the hospitals and the courts I have a fake court session by the way on one of my uh, videos and my channel go search my channel type in fake court session and you'll see a fake court they're talking about nothing in there they're a bunch of improv actors all right I have a lot of proof for you guys I don't just talk because talking is cheap it's showing that counts Okay, there's a lot of videos like mine out there, whether they mention gang stalking or whatever, to try to discredit me. That's how you bury the truth, by creating a lot of lookalikes and entouraging it with it and giving attention to the lookalikes and not much to the truth. That's how you bury it. And to discredit it, a lot of those lookalikes, some of them pretend there's aliens, some of them pretend crazy stuff, really stupid things or boring things. You listen to someone that sits on the table and talks for 10 hours to bore you. You don't even want to watch the video anymore. A lot of stuff like that. Those are all tactics with the Freemason rituals that they pulled. You know, they're tactics to really throw you off your game. Okay. So they've cut down on the number of people because they're exposed. It's over. But movement, guys. Look, everywhere I put the camera, you see the people moving. They're always moving. Look, nobody stands still. They're walking, scratching their heads, scratching their eyes, their ears, playing with their purse, holding bags. It's movement. Cars waiting for me always at the entrances and exits because it's annoying. You don't know if to let them in first or you go first. It's to annoy you. Every single place. And look at the faces of the people that pass by me, not just their actions. They're all miserable because they're trying to make you miserable. Open doors like this and move. Look how he's moving into the door, playing with his hands, grabbing things from the door. So movement. That's how you know they're my prison guards because they're acting weird. They're not real people. Don't take my words for it. You judge for yourself. Starts come in every time I get to a place to surround me and clog my environment. Now they'll stop. So it's, he wants to show me he has a red license plate. Big fucking shit. That he's important, you know? The people that are doing this to me, that are they are government. They can kiss my ass. They're doing something illegal. I'll expose it. I don't care if they're <clears throat> right on top of the government. I ain't afraid of them. Movement, guys. And lots of dogs on leashes. It's psychological warfare. And usually the ones are their women, the attractive women that walk around with the dogs on leashes. So they're trying to double psychologically warfare you as a male. Do you get it? Peculiar smell. Peculiar smell at the entrance. I don't know why, yeah, since I came to film and I'm trying to put it It's like a uh, humid, this. wet carpet that's I rotting, idea, that yeah. kind of smell, you know? Yeah. It's still here, too. Yeah, yeah. It's, oh, it's been like here, it's been like this for a while? No, it's like I was here all week, so I didn't know what happened. So it wasn't yeah. here, it wasn't like this yesterday, it wasn't Yeah, yeah. yeah I know, since I woke up, like, the minute I woke in the morning, I smelled it. It's probably something dropped on a carpet, like wet yeah, overnight yeah, or something like that. Yeah, with the rain, sometimes the rain just comes in through. That's it. That's what I think it is. You're right. I think it's uh, something wet from the water. But humid. The smell of humidity.
had a nice four or five days off, eh? I wasn't off, I was at the other store. I thought you told me that once. What do you do besides this one? Is it a pharmacy I have too? I store at uh, Jane and Wilson, so technically from not here and there. I just Is it a pharmacy? Pharmacy too? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Thanks. There you go. Have a nice day. You too, Sam. Take care. Take care. So, so it's something provocative. They're trying to provoke me. You see, as soon as I come out of the store, she comes out. It's it's kind of like movie extras, you know. You tell them to sit there and wait. As soon as the camera gets close to them or turns on their face, walk, eat, do whatever you're meant to do. Do your part. See how the look how they put the uh, buggies here, the carts. Guys, now I know this is possible in certain areas. You may see carts behind a building because there's a grocery store close by. But this is a big trademark of theirs. It's putting objects in front of me wherever I go so I don't see a full, nice, relaxing view of nature or anything. When you put in a lot of cars and carts in front of people's faces all day long, it's depressing. <laughs> it clogs up your inner tranquility, takes it away. All right? And believe me, I wouldn't have known that if the science wasn't applied to me for years and years and I just woke up and realized it. So I'm not the one to try to be sophisticated or smart because I'm not that smart. It took me so long to figure it out, it ain't funny. I think anybody else would have figured it out earlier than me. I guess because I'm not a skeptic to begin with. It's my nature. I'm one of those believers. Not hardcore, but, you know, when you're a believer and you're still young, you're not raised right, you're not told how things are, It'll take you a while to wake up and start to calculate your own surroundings and ask questions. Why and who and how come and how, you know, for you to realize if there's a scam around you, not to be tricked. So I was born into this trick. And my own family did it to me. It, with, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Colliding with or just with uh, intelligence agencies. They, my own fake parents that raised me work for intelligence agencies and I was an orphan. They took me in and they gave me this life of brainwash and abuse. It's an experiment to see if people wake up from it. I did wake up. I woke up from it. So even when I come here, I have to see people moving and cars passing by. Look, remember elderly, canes, wheelchairs? Because it's a science to depress. They're trying to depress you, keep you depressed. Demotivated so you don't come out of this prison. It's psychological warfare mostly what it's all about. So see, they wait at the door. As soon as I get close by, they come out. And the old man with the cane over there changed route because I started to walk this way. So you can see movement. In front of me, they have to grab something, move their arms, and make noise. And a car comes in. And the old man with the cane. You see, that's what I told you before I left my house. I hope it's still recording because this camera is crazy. Sometimes it just stops recording. This camera is as schizophrenic as my environment is. Noise. You hear that car revving its engine? All day long, all day long around me. Noise campaigns. They keep me defocused, stressed, irritated. So it's my whole environment wherever I go. And they precede me. It's not that they follow me there. They precede me. They have it set up before I get there. That's how you can brainwash someone. Because if the world's like that from the beginning, you could do anything to them. And that's all they would know about their world. Anything. Anything you want. As long as you precede them everywhere they go, so that's all they see when they get there. If from when the time you're a child, every store you go to, every establishment you go to, you see a red chair. For example, from the time you're a kid, everywhere you go, <coughs> you see a red chair. Red chair, red chair. You won't find it odd. But when you wake up one day and start to ask questions, you say, how come there's a red chair in every single establishment I've been in in my life? How come? Then you realize there's something going on here. Somebody's tapping you. Somebody's controlling you. Somebody's giving you an unnatural life. That's what happened to me. 
guys. So when your whole world is red chairs, every single establishment you go to, at your house, your own parents have a red chair at home, uh, your father at the, uh, where he works has a red chair, everywhere you go there's a red chair. You wouldn't question it because it's your world, it's all you know. That's how brainwash works, guys. And it was done to me, I gave you the red chair example, but there's a lot more than that, okay? When it comes to people, the way they talk, the way they think, the stories they surround you with, pure negativity, everything. All they talk about is divorce, cancer, um, problems, health problems, uh, headaches, uh, the bad weather is bad, I'm broke, negativity, 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 so you stay depressed. So, with the psychological warfare, the uh, false information, negative information, and the constant movement in front of you, and noise, what did you do to someone? You destroy them. You depress them. It's a science to depress. This is what was done to me by a Freemason family who worked for an intelligence agency in Lebanon. They brought us here when I was at that perfect age, 13, 14, because here in these countries, they're stronger, these guys. So here in Canada, obviously, the intelligence agency would be CSIS, but not all of its departments. Maybe it's a special department designed, designated for this cause. It's an experiment done by the elites to see if they can brainwash people and give them a life of slavery because they're sadists. They want to abuse us. And they want to take from us everything and they want to have it. That's what a sadist is. People that enjoy torturing people. And the intelligence agency in Canada is not run by the Canadian government, guys. It's independent. The elites run it. That's how they grab our government and our politicians by the nuts. They hijack the country with intelligence agencies. They're establishments to hijack the country. That's what they are. They put them in place. They're hidden. They're sneaky. Not many people know about their operations. They're all covert. And through that, they hijack our whole governments. They have those in every country on the planet. That's what they do. See, look, look. People start working, start moving, going up, down ladders, looking up, looking down, doing weird things, as if a lot is happening as soon as I look there. Nothing will be happening. As soon as I look there, everything starts to happen. That's why I say it's like a movie set, because it is. I made a video and I called it movie set, invisible prison, or both. It's both, guys. That's why I tell you, the Truman Show, the movie, was taken out of my life because it came out in the 90s and I used to watch a lot about movies before and it correlates its its actions with the events of my life and the age I was because the Truman Show was written in the early 90s the movie wasn't produced till 97, 98 and it came out in 99 I think or 98 and they talked about how they went back and forth, changed the story, talked about this director, with this director, talked about the other. It took a while. And all those events, they correlate with the events that I went through in the 90s. Even the actor in that movie is Canadian. Jim Carrey is Canadian, by the way. This is Canada. I'm Canadian. Okay, guys? I don't know what more information I can give you. But the Truman Show, Truman's happy in that fake world. He's being treated good. In real life, you're being abused and tortured in covert ways, not physically, psychologically, emotionally. Uh, you're being deprived of the basic necessities of life uh, that anyone should get, regardless of whether you're an orphan or adopted. It doesn't matter. Even if your own family is not your own family by blood, it doesn't mean that they should abuse you. If it's not your blood, it's not the biggest problem. It's not a great thing, but it's still okay as long as they're treating you good. So, in real life, guys, it's the torture version of the Truman Show. Alright? Same thing. It's a movie set. It's fake. But the people around you are not just smiling at you. and They're torturing you. Pacing in front of you, talking loud wherever you go, pointing fake places wherever you look at them. Oh, let's go here. What about this? It's fake. It's a movie set. They're fake actors paid to torture you. That's it. Most of them don't speak English. Most of them.
that's why you get big sizes they love people with big size to come and cross your path and walk in front of you so you see movement look everywhere you go I have to see people come out and walk around me I'm surrounded by people everywhere I go 40 50 that are moving the whole time and pointing see the pointing look it's a, it's a big satanic thing, the pointing. Point there, point here. Oh, where are you going? Oh, where's the house? Oh, over there. Oh, what about, I want this donut. I want that coffee. Pointing, always pointing that, that. Sudden, quick. Cutting you off and walking in this violent way. It's, it's a bad energy. It's negative energy. It's not welcoming you. It's just, see, look what they bring me to depress me. Hello. How are you? She didn't even say fine. Bad mean faces, depressing faces and constant cars on the road guys, constant, constant, constant there are cars back and forth so you keep creating this noise there's always cars passing by you all day long, how do you feel? so all the people that live in these buildings are not normal residents they work on this show guys, this fake setting what they do is they have my apartment surveilled, not from the inside, from the apartments around it and the walls Everything I do, they know. As soon as I leave, they page all these people. Actually, as soon as I wake up, a cruiser comes by and puts on the siren, not continuously, in an on and on and off fashion. They drive from the bottom of the street all the way up the cruiser. So you know the cops obviously are in on it. It's a government thing. That's to alert the people in the neighborhood that I'm up. As soon as I leave my apartment, when, I'm, when they know I'm up, they take their phones and they put it beside them. As soon as I leave the apartment, they get a page on their phone, he's leaving. So they go to their normal places where they're supposed to stand. It's all organized and architected. One comes out of here, one comes out of the building down there. They all take their positions. They have certain positions to take. And when I get there, as soon as I look at them, they leave the position. So I always see movement and noise and they talk and laugh and just all fake stuff that doesn't make any sense. Improv, improv acting. Improv. See now, she swings her legs, the one sitting on the bench over there. And these guys walk over me. As soon as they saw me get here, before I talk to you guys, they started taking, leaving the bench and coming. Because they have to cross that. So that's who these people are. They know they're holding you prisoner. This is a prison. An innocent person that hasn't done any crime, held as a prisoner. They're making money out of it. Well, look at this one swinging her leg on the bench. Any movement, guys, movement, they're always moving. They don't stop moving. That one started to play with the plastic bags over there. She took the other spot, so I see objects in front of me when I get home. That's the one that crossed me really fast, down there. And look, even on the inside the office, they move. So it's a movie set. They tell them to take their places. They take their positions. As soon as they get close to their area, they move. Improv actors that are here to torture you, pretty much. It's fake, it's a fake setting, that's why you get depressed. It's not real natural people that you can give and take a normal conversation with. Improv, most of them are, are either disabled or, not that there's anything wrong with disabled people, but a normal person does not want to be surrounded with disabilities all day long. See, you see events like these every now and then, or they put dirt on the floor, they pass by me, 20 garbage trucks every day. People, as soon as they see me, they come to the garbage, they throw garbage, demeaning you, making you feel disgusted the whole time, telling you stories about things that destroy you, always talking to you about sex, because a guy in prison like me, it's not easy for him, I have to go out of my way to get it. So you think about things that are not good for you in the meantime, you're a prisoner. Imagine a guy in prison, you're taking naked women and putting them in front of him all day long. What would you do to that person? It's torture, you're teasing him. And all they talk about is drugs, things that destroy you, or they're always complaining, negative things. They have arthritis, some guy got cancer, all these negative stories to keep you depressed. That's all I hear, that's all you hear, those are all the stories, watch. Every person I meet, I have enough videos out there, watch them. It's all negative stories. Now they cut down a lot, guys. What you saw today, the amount of people is nothing. Watch my old videos to see the amount of people. Because they're afraid. I'm, I'm exposing the truth. But I'm still not trying to escape the prison yet. That's why they're still content. Today we're going to start with the first action coming soon. Noise, noise, noise and movement. Look, again, as I turn and come this way. But now, you know what they've taught them? Look at my old videos and you see the difference. 
They told him, don't move too much. Move a little bit up to a certain point, then stop moving. That's the difference between now and the old videos. The old videos, they kept on moving. See, there's still movement, but not as much as before. They cut it down. Watch my old videos so you can believe me. Now, let's get up there. We've recorded enough, even over there, the guy the red. So this is it, guys. You know, I tried to make a small video for you today in the morning. So you see these events of my life, they're happening every day. And not me talking on the camera and telling you some sob story, proving what I'm seeing and what I'm going through and what I'm experiencing and how my surrounding is like. Someone has to be in the lobby before I get in and they're moving. They have to move, play on their phone, put it in their pocket when I get close, move the laundry basket, anything, constant movement and constant people around me. One goes in, one comes out, they play tag. Tag. One goes in, one comes out. Now I'll meet another one by the elevator to make noise. Or talk loud for no reason. So even from the back, look, the back of the building, they have to bring in a car, someone has to leave. We'll smoke this upstairs. They move over there. So now they're gonna bang me. Now, this is my prison, guys. They talk everywhere I go. These people, they have a loud conversation, and if you understand what they're saying, they're talking about nothing, 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 meaningless. They're trying to get a small chair into the door. Three people sit there and look, okay, how are we going to get it in? Should we flip it this way? Should we flip it that way? They start talking like that. Meaningless, meaning unnecessary. It's unnecessary to hear people talking all day long everywhere you go. But that's the idea. It's to keep you drained with noise. Because noise drains your energy levels. It keeps you defocused, disoriented, and annoyed, and depressed eventually. They're attacking your inner tranquility. A lot of noise, a lot of movement. They're doing that to the whole planet. That's what television is. In the end, the news station doesn't tell you anything. They just fill up your ears for half an hour with talk, laughing, and attractive women there for men or for women, you know, different tactics, and people moving in the background so they can get you dizzy and disorient you. That's it. That's all it is, television. Hey okay guys, we're almost home. I'm gonna upload this video right now. We're gonna have a nice day today. I'll be in touch. I'll upload more videos later on.
Hey guys, it's uh, 12.43 p.m. Um, I want to show you, I emailed the RCMP, I'll show you the date here, Wednesday 7.17 p.m., which was two days ago. Mm, let's see here the date. So this is what I said to them. This is the RCMP in Ottawa, I guess the uh, head office. I told them, hello, my name, SIN number, I live in this, blah, blah, blah. I've been severely and criminally stalked in my building, my neighborhood, and by many people. It seems like a government agency is doing it covertly. Cops at 42 Division, which is in Scarborough, where I live, can't help me. It's been about 10 months. I was threatened on my old YouTube channel by someone claiming they worked for CSIS. I need to report this and something has to be done because it's getting out of hand I would like to come in to want to I would like to come in to your office and report this thanks with much appreciation PS I have proof my YouTube channel is stop invasion of privacy and this is the link to my channel now this was on Wednesday uh, the 19th uh, 2019 at 7 17 p.m. Now I'm gonna show you the first reply I got from them which was about a day later let's go to my inbox um, okay this is let's see the first one wait a second guys this is the second one that I got yesterday let's go see the first one there's the first one okay the first reply I got from them it was in French first I don't know why they do that but doesn't matter you know, I speak French too, so it's okay. And then, in English at the bottom here. It says, thank you for contacting the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, Canadian Criminal Real-Time Identification Services. This confirms that we have received your message and will reply as soon as possible. Please note, due to a high volume of search requests, we suggest you visit our website at for information on processing time for criminal record verifications. The RCMP offers services in both Canadian official languages. We will reply to you in the official language used in your email. Perfect. I waited, and they were pretty quick. They were pretty good. The next day, they replied again, which was yesterday. This is what they said. Okay. This is the reply. And this is the date, the 20th, which was yesterday, at 7.42 a.m. Good day. Please contact your local police regarding this matter. Thank you. Okay? Now, who is my local police? It's Scarborough in here, 42 Division. So we're going to go there, and we're going to see what we can do. And I'm going to show you how they're going to act over there when I'm at the station. I'm going to record everything for you guys. You're going to watch this with me step by step as we move forward. So you can see the playing around behind the scenes. I'll be in touch.